Hello, welcome back to our machine learning course. I'm Joaquin van Schoren, and this will be a short video on feature engineering. So it's a, a lesser used um, or lesser known third techniques, which are nonetheless very useful. Uh, they're mainly useful whenever you want to use simple models, such as uh, linear models. Uh, and th these methods all change your original data by doing some operations or transformations on them. Uh, first, uh, there's polynomial features, so we add polynomials to the features, as we've seen already in the, the kernelization uh, lecture. You can also add interactions between the features, and you can split up the features in multiple bins and then create multiple features out of them. So all these methods basically create more features based on the existing ones. Like I said, it's mostly useful for simple models, um, like linear models. Uh, more advanced models like SVMs and random forests, they can actually learn interactions by themselves. Um, but there can be cases uh, where you don't want that. So first of all, um, linear models are really fast. So you may not want to use an SVM because it's just too slow or because it's more or less robust or more easy to overfit. It could also be that you are working in a system that is built around linear models which makes sense because they're very fast uh, and you may just want to use them and you just want a way to um, change the data a bit so you can, can get more out of it. Okay, okay let's start. Uh, so first, uh, the first method is polynomial features. Uh, this is exactly the same as uh, we've seen um, in, in kernelization, right? So if you use an RBF kernel, uh, sorry, if you use a polynomial kernel, this is basically what happens. So you take your original features, um, x1 to xp, we'll add a 1 in the beginning, uh, just to make the transformation easier. Um, then for each feature, we add uh, the original ones. So we copy the original features. We add all the squares of all the features. So we just take the, the, all the values of feature 1, and we just all square them, and it gives us x1 squared. Uh, we do this for every feature, up to xp squared. Then we do this uh, for x1 to the third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, all the way to the dth degree. And then we add all the interactions. So uh, element-wise products of feature x1 times x2, x1 times x3, x1 times x4, all the way to xp1 minus 1 to xp. Uh, right. So this creates a quite large feature space, depending on, on how large t is. Um, but the, the upshot is that now you can fit a linear model in this high dimensional space. And if you then uh, plot that back in the original space, you can see that instead of our um, linear model here, so if we just give features x1 to p to our data set, and we plot here uh, x1 versus x2, for instance, or x1 versus the target, um, we get a straight line here. While if we would um, plot x1 here, but uh, with all the other features, uh, we can actually learn very complex relationships between all the points. Right? So yeah, this, it's a quite simple transformation from a low-dimensional space to a high-dimensional space. And in this high-dimensional space, we can fit much more, uh, well, we always fit a hybrid plane, but uh, because we have so many features, we can um, approximate it up much better than otherwise done. Okay? So you can learn very complex uh, relationships between uh, the data between the, in the inputs and the outputs. All right, so another thing you can do is binning. So here you basically take a feature, so we take feature x1 here, uh, and say this is our feature original. Uh, we separate that in multiple bins. So in this case, I, my feature goes from minus three to three, and we split it into, uh, so minus three to three, and split it into four bins, from minus three to one and a half, minus one and a half to zero, zero to 1.5, down 1.5 to, to, to three, and these become our three new features, our four new features. And then, um, depending on the value, this will end up in one of the bins. So minus 0 0.75 ends up in this bin. So this will be a one, and the rest is zero. Uh, 2.7 ends up in one here, and this one ends up here. So now we've represented this one feature as four features. And the benefit of this is that now we can fit a four-dimensional hybrid plane, which hopefully fits our data better. And if you then plot that uh, in the, the space of our original feature, you will see that this 
basically gives you a different uh, yeah line here it's still learning mode right uh, between uh, for every bin so you get this stepwise function um, and this hopefully approximates your data better right it definitely gives you more room and the more fine-grained you make this the more fine-grained these steps will be right now this one caveat here and that's that um, you still only learn one coefficient for your original feature right this learns one weight uh, for this feature so that means that in this space if you look at in this space um, the slope will always be the same okay so we can change that by adding interaction features so that basically means that uh, we take our original four features and we add four more which uh, are uh, these four multiplied by the original value right so now we have uh, 0 minus 0 0.57 this times this is this uh, 0 0 again and this makes this one 0.5 and 1.4 makes 1.4 so now we add four more features and now we can learn a coefficient for each one independently uh, and that means that we can have different slopes for the different uh, bins here And yeah, so and then you can actually learn quite complex uh, uh, relationships. And again, if you need more um, granularity, you can always make smaller bins, and you can approximate the data uh, more closely. Okay. So in the end, if you do this to the extreme, you will end up learning a stepwise function that more or less follows the data quite closely. All right. Um, you can do the same thing for categorical features. Um, and this is useful uh, in many situations where you want to make sure that your model uh, learns um, different groups in your data differently. So let, let's take a look at this example. So here we have uh, a data set uh, of people and we have their gender, we have their age, we have the number of page views on our website and the time they spent on our website. Uh, and we now, we can, we can learn one model over this, but now we want to, well, we think that males and females behave differently. So we want our model to not view these, not, not learn a linear model for both of them at once, but we want to build a linear model that uh, models both of them separately. Okay, and so we can do that by taking first the gender, uh, and then we create uh, this block of features, um, but where uh, we multiply basically uh, this uh, category with all of the features. Okay? So we get this category gender gives us a one for males, and then we just copy all these values because it's a male here. Here we multiply by a female, and because this was a male here, uh, this is all zeros now. Okay. Uh, the next one is a female, so this will be all zeros here, and we copy the values here. And next one is again a male, so we have values here, and this is zero. And the next two are females, so we have zeros here, and then the rest of the data. Now, if you would reorder this data, you will basically find a data set. Uh, which has, uh, for instance, data here for male and all zeros here. And this one will have all zeros here. And this will have some data for females and one here. Right? And so this actually allows your model to learn different models for different subspaces. Right? So in, in, in this subspace, you build a model for males. In this subspace, you build a model for females. And that way you can more closely approximate um, certain aspects uh, in your data. Okay, that's the end of our short lecture on feature engineering. And I hope you liked it and see you in the next lecture.